If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to Downfall Network for more cool content. What's up, everyone? Thrall's Metal here once again. I'm Necroc Nick. I'm Jam and John. And we have an album review for you. So another release that came out on the 13th of November that we had our eyes on was the newest one from Of Feather and Bone, Sulfuric Disintegration. This comes out on Profound Lore Records. This band is an unbelievably dissonant death metal band. My God, it's heavier than hell. <laughs> Formed in... Denver, Colorado in 2012. This is their third full length. They have two other EPs. Now, my first exposure to them, I pretty much bought their second album, Bestial Hymns of Perversion, uh, on a whim. Like, I looked at the cover and pretty much was like, well, this is death metal. I'm pretty sure of it. It's on profound lore. It should be awesome. <laughs> and I was right. This was one I totally forgot was coming out. And when I saw it was out, I was like, well, I have to check this out because that second one was absolutely just scathing and pretty much picks up right where it left off. Opening track, Regurgitated Communion, which that is gross and blasphemous <laughs> at the same time. It's not as gross as the last track on this album. Not nearly, <laughs> but we'll get to that one. Pretty much you get like a nice little bit of atmosphere, some chains clanging mm -hmm. in a large sewer, well, drainage ditch. Tomb. I don't know. It sounds creepy. There's stuff dripping, and then <laughs> Dude, it sounds it sounds gross. It sounds gross. It yeah. sounds it sounds pretty bad down there. Definitely wash your hands after that one, and then explodes into just disturbingly dissonant death metal. Mm -hmm. Right away, I have to say the drummer destroyed his drum kit. It, it had to be destroyed after maybe three songs. Because yeah, dude, he, because he's playing with tire irons. He's not using sticks. Crowbars, like the, that, hammers. That guy and those blast beats, it just reminds me a lot of Mike Smith. Yes. From Suffocation, just because every snare hit is just pronounced. There's yeah. no... Like, he's getting, like, full extension on there somehow. Like, yeah. he, he might just be just, like, full arm in it. I don't know how he's moving his entire arm that fast, and I'm pretty sure there's, like, elbow and shoulder damage. But... They're so pronounced. They are so damn heavy. They are so damn aggressive, which mixes well with the rest of the brand's approach is just as heavy. It's disturbingly dissonant. Pretty much like all the riffs on here, or at least most of the riffs on here, are like very disturbing tremolo riffs. Yes. All dissonant, just moving at like the speed of hummingbird wings. Pretty much. I mean, you know, I, I had a gripe. I wish that the volume wouldn't have been the only thing cranked to 11. Like, they they cranked everything to 11, but it gets drowned out. Yeah. Like, if it wasn't for the fact that there was just some very rich tremolo on this album, I don't know if you could hear those riffs, which is a bummer. Yeah. Because they're I know... Intricate. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're very, very technical, like, just really just odd combinations of different, like, kinds of tremolo, big chuggy riffs, mm -hmm. some really cool crawling riffs that are all over the place. But I think the main thing on this was for the atmosphere to be very disturbing and super aggressive, because yeah. that is exactly what you get. This album rarely slows down. And when it does, Woo. my God, does it get even heavier. Entropic self-immolation is the first chance it really takes to break down and get slower, and that's like a track and a half through this album. The rest of the time it is flying. Mm -hmm. But my God, it, it crawls down to like an incantation death doom break pace. Yep. yep. The thing I really liked here was this is kind of a nice little break in the production. You can actually hear more of the individual instrumentation here. You know, the bass actually kind of comes up a little bit. The bass is definitely buried the, in the mix. Yeah, dude. It, but it, you can hear it more audibly in the Death Doom breaks. Well, as the and as the record presses on too, like the there are just times in the song where everything becomes a more a little bit more present. And when you get like chuggier spots, mm -hmm. you know, because I mean, again, a lot of this is that very like dissonant style of tremolo. Like it reminds me a lot of a band like Vitriol. Vitriol. Yep. Loves that sort of thing. You know, lots of like just scraping strings and creating lots of dissonant atmosphere. You get all of that on here, except it's more like an incantation or like drawn and quartered sort of approach. Vermin womb. Yeah. Yeah. The whole approach in this album, at least for me, kind of screened like like Norwegian black metal in the 90s, that sort of raw, aggressive approach 
just make it as dissonant and ugly as possible, but still have these cool little melodies. Take that approach, apply it to death metal. And it's very similar. And you know, there are blackened moments on mm -hmm. here. There's a lot mm -hmm. of spots in here that really scream blackened death metal or even sort of black metal. Like I picked up some parts in there that kind of reminded me of Marduk a bit. The nods definitely came out in the vocals in the song Noctomnania. Yeah, I think that's how you say it. I think it is, cool. <laughs> <laughs> the vocals I think throughout that song kind of steer away more from that really death evil sounding growl he has. Oh God, it's, into, it's... into just more of like a 90s black metal album. Yeah, I really liked a lot of the stuff they did on that song too, in terms of like there's a nice big death doom break in there, which is Actually, glorious. it happens. I think it's the verses of the song. I'm not a hundred percent. I don't know. But it, the, everything's coming at you at like at a mile a minute. Like it is just flying at you. But there's a spot in there where it's like growls, then like whispers and mm -hmm. groans, and then a little bit higher pitched scream, like wails in the distance. Yep. And it builds a great atmosphere. This was one of my favorite songs of the album, mm -hmm. and it really just stands out. The like, whole song is just violent. <laughs> I mean. It, a violent song and a violent album. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Their breakdowns, which again I think are the verses, just slow, sludgy, nasty incantation. Sour lemon face. Just, <laughs> yeah. You, you can pretty much feel Cthulhu rising from the ocean very slowly. There is an issue I did have with this album, and, you know, it kind of comes down the mix, but also kind of comes down the style is there are parts that really kind of blend together where, like, the transition is like from one very dissonant, ugly riff section to another dissonant, ugly riff section. And the fact that the mix is so over the top, like yeah. you really can't make out like the difference between the two because it just comes across as a wall of noise. Now granted, I love all the dissonance. It builds- I do too. I'm a giant yeah. fan of ambient dissonance and just, just the atmosphere that it builds. Oh dude. The, it, it, it's, it's, it's unwelcoming which is kind of odd for an album you want to listen to, but I think this album hates everything. It it's just hates, I think, the listener, which is odd. But I really got into like that just chaotic mm -hmm. nature of the album. It is disturbing across the board. And by the time you get down to the last track, Baptized in Boiling Phlegm, that's the gross one we were talking about. I can't, I can't imagine how that smells, man. It's, just... There's definitely a smell to it. Oh, I'm my sure. God. It's salty and I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, but the like, but the steam boiling, rising up, oh, dude. Like boiling feet and toenails. But I mean, it pretty much kicks off with an insane guitar freakout. But this one, again, towards the end, labors a little bit more like distinct riffs. There's mm -hmm. some morbid angel moments towards the end that are just yes. really heavy. But they also have like a really good hook that you can make out because it's not all about the distance. It's about bringing in some like nice chuggy distinct yeah. riffs, and made for a really killer standout song. Now this album isn't very long, it just clocks a little bit over a half an hour, but... Like 30 minutes and 15 seconds? Something like that, and by the time you're done with it, you're pretty much just luckily left with some teeth, because <laughs> if, this album's trying to knock them out. If yeah. I wasn't possessed, I, I am now. Yeah, this one... Uh, I read the lyrics, dude, the lyrics to this song. <laughs> Another thing that I think this album could have used is more of those Death Doom breaks, because when they come in, they hit hard. They are some of the most pronounced moments yep. on the entire yep. album. Yep. And I mean, that may just be because I'm a huge Death Doom fan, but I mean, I love that sound, like the hooded menace, Dizma sort of feel. Like, it adds so much more power to a song, too. Not that I'm not a fan of heavy songs and blast beats and crazy riffs, but when you do add in really well done Death Doom breakdowns, just adds so much to a song. Yeah, and I feel like they do it. This band does it well enough. Oh my god, to, they do it incredible. Yeah, <laughs> so like more of them obviously would have been way better. These guys sure are angry for being in the city of Denver. I've yeah. been to Denver. I had a great time. I'm not gonna say why, but I had a great time. I know why. But overall, I'm gonna give this one four stars. I really dug this. It is scathing. Like this is up there.